Welcome back to Estuary Live. We are on the research vessel, the Palmetto, and we're going to look around and see um, what a research vessel is like and how different it is from some of the others. So let's see what we can find out today. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome aboard the RV Palmetto. Uh, this is the main deck where uh, all of the work starts. We're loaded up for an artificial reef cruise and these are the buoys, the anchors, and the chain that we put over on the state's artificial reefs. Uh, this is a zodiac which the divers uh, load into. We use the crane to put it over the side and the divers get in and go and make their dives, take their videos. And a lot of the fish that you've been learning about the last couple of days when they get a little bit larger, they migrate out to these artificial reefs that are off of the coast of South Carolina. And uh, if you're ready to go inside, we'll walk through and see what a research vessel is like. Cool. All right. Well, ladies, we're going to scoot in here. we got to manipulate a little bit. On a boat, you've got to take extra precaution to keep out um, the moisture. And if, if it happens to be a really windy or... The waves happen to be really big, and so that makes us have to um, kind of tuck in to these spaces on a boat, and we have to work at um, having the camera situated as well. This is the lab where uh, all the fish that we catch are worked up in the lab in here, and uh, this is a, a measuring board, electronic, so I think you were watching on the last segment how they manually measured fish, and this is all done electronically by a computer, and uh, so it makes it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker, especially when the weather's not so good. Oh, exactly. What do you, how would you like to be measuring fish if we had big waves? I'd love it because I like roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> good answer. All right. We're going to try not to jump rope with the, micro, the microphone. Um, wire here as we go through some of our spots and travel through the boat. This down here goes to the engine room and that's uh, semi-cramped so we're not going to try to go down there today but uh, that's where our generator which gives us our power and our main engines which move us through the water is all located down there in that space. This is the lounge. Watch your step. Okay, the lounge. Watch your step, and I think you'll get to see the door, the opening for um, where they go down into the engine room as we're passing into the lounge. Comfy. <laughs> this is where, uh, if when people are off, we work. We work 24 hours, and people work six hours on, and then they have six hours off, and. One of the, you can sit in here and read or eat when it's meal time. We have two bathrooms, which are called heads, on, on the boat. And there's cruise quarters there, over there. And then here's the other, there's four bunks in this, in this room here where the crew sleeps. Okay, so we'll ease on past this so the, the camera can um, kind of get a view of the bunks. Ladies, would you like to bunk in there? Yeah. yeah. Cordella, what do you think? Yes, I would like to. I think we have a couple of ladies that wouldn't mind being working on a research oh, vessel. <laughs> future volunteers. And down below here is the scientific quarters. Uh, he'll get a shot of that shortly. And there's nine more bunks down there, which <laughs> gives us we can carry we can carry 15 people and. We're usually gone a week at a time, and like I said, we six hours on, six hours off, so you're continually rotating shifts. And this is the galley that we're getting ready to come into now. Okay, we're getting ready to go into the galley. We're passing the all-important coffee machine. <laughs> 14 people, I mean 15. Right, well that's why we eat. You know, half, six people or half of the crew eats and then they go and relieve the people that are working and then they come in and eat because we can't all, as you can see, fit in here at one time. That would not work. So, this, so this is a lot of rotation, Grace had said. Okay? All right. And this is, 
basically the brains of the operation. We have uh, our navigation. Uh, we have a computer that shows this is the boat. This is where we are here in the boat slip, and it you can uh, it shows how we would go out when we head offshore and uh, depth. And this is our. This tells you where you are, latitude and longitude. Well, we have some questions, and one thing that um, actually this goes along with my question: Do you have more than one captain when you're out on a cruise? There's two of us that uh, we rotate six hours on and six hours off, and we have a chief engineer who maintains the engines and all the pumps and uh, so forth, and then we have two uh, two deck personnel that switch off every six hours and they operate the the crane and the winches and then we have a chef that <laughs> keeps us all well fed and uh, keeps everybody happy keeps everybody happy that's correct now Claire from Pasadena and it, that may be California so they're up and watching us because they're they're not on the same time as we are they Claire wants to know what's the square footage of this vessel and I'm not sure you measure it by length and width I'm not sure you do square footage do you do that no, we, we don't. We're 110 feet long and 26 feet wide, and we draw about seven feet of water. We, we need roughly seven feet of water to, to float. And the tonnage of the boat is 99 gross tons, which is how much water this boat dis displaces what, when it's floating. So. That's pretty big. Well, I think we're going to, um, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to migrate down onto the back. Okay, students, everybody go ahead of me and find a, sp a space. Um, and again, we're going through some of those um, tight doorways because, again, they have to make sure they can seal the boat up if they need to in rough seas, which hopefully they don't have to get into. But we all know occasionally that happens. Just safety equipment. This is our our life raft, which will hold what it. Uh, should we need it, it pops open and basically inflates, much like the Zodiac that was down on the deck, and it'll hold 15 people. So, and it has emergency supplies in it, water and little fishing gear and first aid kits and and everything that. You hopefully will never need, but if you do, it's it's there. Yeah, I know, like what you were saying a while ago, not only do the captains of the boat have certain regulations and rules to follow, you also have safety things that you have to have on a boat as well. Right, very much so, very much so. We have, we have a list of uh, where should the alarms go off, where everyone, a station that everyone knows that they must go to, and stand by for fighting a fire which this is our fire monitor which is much like a water cannon so that we can uh, shoot it anywhere around a, another vessel or anything like that and we have fire hose stations all all over the boat so we just grab the hoses and go but yeah, knock on wood, we don't we don't use those. Hope you never have to. Well, I think you're, we're going to see some traps over here around behind us. Um, so get, get back to some of the research that um, the ship helps support. These are called chevron traps, and you can see right where we're looking is the opening. Right. They sit on the bottom just, just as they are there, and we, depending on the depth of the water, the 200 feet of line, for example, goes from the trap up to a buoy, and they're baited with herring or menhaden, and uh, they soak for 90 minutes, and then we come along and pick the buoy up and haul the trap to the surface, and uh, the scientists either, depending on the project, we may tag the fish and release them, or we may, uh, they may sacrifice some of the fish to get uh, age data or reproductive data out of, out of the fish. 